Fox News alert, an explosive new allegation from DOJ whistleblower J. Christian Adams. Adams testifying before the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights yesterday on the government's decision to drop a voter intimidation case against members of the new Black Panther Party. Adams dropping yet another bombshell yesterday, but this one got less attention. He says that there is a Justice Department mandate not to enforce the law that requires ineligible voters, including people who have died, who are registered illegally, and so on, to be taken off of the voter registration rolls. And he says that mandate is because of politics within the DOJ. Uh, former Department of Justice attorney and now Pajamas Media contributor, Jay Christian Adams, joins me live. Christian, thank you so much for being back here. I, I don't think most people understand what the motor voter law is, what this, what the, why this matters. I, in, in my estimation as an attorney, if, tr if true, this allegation is at least equal to, perhaps bigger than, the one you revealed last week. I in layman's terms, what is it you are saying the DOJ is doing here? Okay, a lot of folks probably remember Motor Voter was passed in the 90s, and it was passed to uh, get everybody registered but also bring integrity to the voter rolls. And so there's something that's called Section 8 of Motor Voter that states are required to make sure there's not dead people voting, there's not dead people on the rolls, and the U.S. Justice Department has the power to enforce Section 8 of Motor Voter if states are not removing dead and duplicate voters from the rolls. And it's not just dead people, it's, it's dead people, it's illegal voters, it's uh, felons, it's people who shouldn't be on the rolls and the states are supposed to remove them because if they're still on the rolls when voting day comes along, it can lead to voter fraud. That's right, and it has. If, if you look at, 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 there's plenty of evidence that in the last presidential election, a lot of ineligible felons did in fact vote. Okay, so you say that a woman by the name of Julie Fernandez, who is a deputy assistant attorney general within the DOJ, she is no a small ranking person. This is, this is a person with power within the DOJ, a political appointee, correct? That's right. She supervises the voting section today at the Department of Justice. All right. What, what was the mandate handed down, according to you, by Ms. Fernandez? Well, it was about November 30th of 2009. Uh, Ms. Fernandez scheduled a meeting with the entire voting section in the conference room on the fifth floor where the voting section is. It's probably between 30, 40, or 50 people in the room that heard this also. And what she said was, when we addressed Section 8, which is the deads and duplicates and ineligible provision, that there was no interest in enforcing this provision of the law, that it had absolutely nothing to do with increasing turnout, that it, it prevented access to the ballot box, it didn't increase it, and therefore there was no interest and that wasn't going to be done. And you could look at the record. There's actually a record on this in the, during this administration where they dismissed a case that the Bush administration had brought against Missouri and they haven't brought any new cases. So uh, there's 40 eyewitnesses to this mandate, there's litigation evidence that they're not doing it, and there's a dismissal of the Missouri case. So your, your claim is that this Deputy Assistant Attorney General, Julie Fernandez, has issued a mandate that the law, Section 8, not be enforced because, in her view, to do so would not encourage turnout. Well, that's exactly what she said in front of a whole room full of people, including Chris Coates, uh, who was the voting section chief who's under subpoena to testify to the Civil Rights Commission about this and the Black Panther matter. And the Department of Justice is not allowing Mr. Coates to testify. He's the person who threw the brief at the head of um, at, at Tom Perez, who was making the decision not to pursue the Black Panthers case, uh, and, and Chris Coates threw the brief. So aggravated was he that to learn that Perez hadn't even read the briefs, according to you. You know, if 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 what you're saying is true, Christian, essentially you're accusing Ms. Fernandez of sanctioning voter fraud, of saying, you know, that's not what we're concerned about. What we're concerned about is getting turnout on election day, and in particular, uh, the motor voter law is said to encourage minority turnout. Is that what you understand the, the goal to be? Well, yeah, it, 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 the real problem here is I testified yesterday is a lawlessness that's in the Civil Rights Division that will enforce some laws but not others. If you look at what Chris Coe said at his going away speech, he made this perfectly clear that this mandate was given. You can, you can read it online, it's there, uh, and, and it's, it's unambiguous, and there's no cases being brought. All you need to do is look at the facts 
and you'll see uh, this is corroborated. And yet the Department of Justice continues uh, not on the record with the, with the Commission of, of Civil Rights uh, since you've made these most recent allegations. They, they sent Perez there to testify before. But they continue through a statement to us to deny these allegations generally. We reached out to them specifically about what you're saying today, uh, and they have not yet responded. They, have, uh, they appear not inclined to comment, at least not so far. But as you know before, they've denied your allegations and say that they are enforcing the laws equally. Uh, do, is it your position, Christian, that the Department of Justice is engaging in a cover-up of its political motivations for decisions that are supposed to be made without politics and purely based on the law. If the department has denied that this conversation took place in front of a room full of people, one of which is under subpoena, they're in a whole heap of trouble because everybody saw it happen. There's no question about it. I mean, are they, do you believe that they are attempting to cover up a political agenda? Well, listen, a lot of people don't like the, ex, uh, the enforcement of Section 8. Uh, Project Vote, Demos, these various groups have always uh, been concerned more about Section 7 of Motor Voter, which the people has registration. Registered. That's right, a welfare offices and so forth. They should work hand in hand. Both sections should be enforced, not just one. And, and the problem is it's a political football. One administration goes one way, one goes the other. And, and I wanted to raise that with you because when uh, Alberto Gonzalez was our attorney general, Project Vote, which of course is connected with ACORN, uh, and also with President Obama at one point when he was not, not president, uh, they came into the Department of Justice and complained that the voter registration requirements of, of the voter registration law were not being followed and that the attorney general needed to pursue that piece of the law more. And they claimed that uh, the man then in charge, uh, the primary supervisor of the voting section, Hans von Spakovsky, excuse the pronunciation, ref blew off their concerns and didn't take any action. So is this just, I mean, what you're alleging now, Christian, is it just politics, a tit for tat? You know, one side makes accusations under a, under a Republican president, the other makes the same under a Democrat. But there's a difference. The Bush administration did bring both Section 7 and Section 8 cases. You can look this up on the web. It's right there at the Department of Justice webpage. They enforce the welfare registration provisions and the integrity provisions. You cannot find any Section 8 cases brought by this administration. Christian, you know, since you and I had our interview and you've given testimony now, you have become a punching bag for some out there uh, in what is not uh, fair and balanced media. And uh, they, have, they have claimed that you have an agenda. They have pointed out that you're a conservative. And they have dismissed your allegations as, as coming from a partisan person. And indeed, when I interviewed you last week, I told you that a source close to this case uh, said that you were a conservative and that essentially you had an agenda. <laughs> I want to give you the chance in the wake of, you know, it's been a week now, to respond to the attacks on you. Look, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. Pajamas Media has posted all of my employment records. I encourage people to go look at them. It's unprecedented. My performance reviews are up to read, my awards, my salary. You can see how much I was making. Uh, other Justice Department uh, supervisors from the past have come out and posted at Pajamas Media. People have worked with me about my integrity, about my professionalism, and most of all about my impartiality. Go look at it and judge for yourself. The facts are the facts, and the department has not denied that they aren't bringing Section 8 cases. It's reality. Everyone in the section knows it. People in the voting section must be snickering and saying, well, we know he's telling the truth about this for sure because we heard it ourselves. And if uh, the department chooses to comply with the subpoenas that have been served upon it, perhaps we will hear from those others. Uh, Jay Christian Adams, thank you so much. Thank you. Again, folks, I want to tell you that we've reached out to the Department of Justice. On these latest allegations so far, no response. The door remains open to them uh, for a paper statement or a person to come on live at any point.